The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on this Friday, the uh, 6th of May, and we're looking at the Dow. Um, this is going to be very interesting since the Dow uh, had a spectacular move up on Wednesday, an even more spectacular move down on uh, Thursday, and today went almost down, so it went down to 32,474. The low on, let me just do this here, 32,449 was the low on the second. And what I'd say to subscribers is that, uh, maybe let me do this. I think it's best. Let me just run the numbers. The Dow is down 349, having made a low of 32,474. The S&P is down so the dow is down 1.03 percent the s p is down 1.2 percent uh and it's down 50 points at 4094. the low of uh, did i rewrite that i'm not sure if i did that correctly the low of the second was 4062.51 oh i wrote the wrong thing in 4062 4062 point one, I think I see it doesn't matter. It's 4,000, 4,062. And now we're looking at, hey, yeah, yeah. And now, and now we're looking at, uh, it was five. Get rid of that. There we go. And now we're looking at a low of 4,067.91. Um, in the H pattern, the dreaded H pattern, how we break below the left side low is really important. You can, you've seen that one, two, three, four. This is the fifth time. Usually when you get to about the fifth time of an H going into a downward mode, call it the dreaded H because, let me show you the pattern right here. Because this particular pattern what happens when it retests the left side low is really important. If it breaks, it can go even much lower. That's called the dreaded H, an A pattern, uh, an arch pattern in the H formation that stores at a peak A or a B. Um, how it tests the left side low is it, it, really important. Very often, we keep coming down, and then there's a very large arch. What happens on that particular test is really important because if we break down, and you're going to get your one-to-one -to, -one to the downside from the arch high to the base of the left side low. Whew. In this particular case, you're looking at a big move. Now, I heard a couple of things with, with Tommy O'Brien. You know, Tom kicks us off um, at 9 a.m. with the market. It's called the market kickoff show. And uh, he does a fabulous job trying to put together technicals and fundamentals. And what he was saying, when have we had a 6% rally and a 6% and a decline in the same week? Well, it wasn't in the same week. But we had that from the low of 41.14.65 on the 24th of February, going to 44.16. Uh, that's a 300 point. Uh, yeah, that's a 300 point move to the upside, and then it comes down. It didn't quite. I don't think it was six percent on the downside, but that was a pretty steep decline to the 41.57 low, and we did it. Um, we did it before when we came from the. 42.22 low of the 24th of January to the 45.95 high. So, and I'm not sure, is that that's um, three, four, almost 400 points? Uh, yeah, that was a 8, 9% rally, and then it gave it back very soon afterwards. So, what I was looking at here is that there was a chance that these candles, I call them the Chapman Wave Roman candles, uh, let me just show you, it's basically on the Dow in this particular instance, that those candles that open with a fractional wick and then plunge to the downside and then rally back a half to two thirds above the low. Uh, if they're green candles, that's usually a very good sign if the price closes above uh, for three out of four sessions. Um, and 
I call this one here on the 2nd of May a half Chapman Wave Roman candle. So maybe it did the same thing. It did the rally to the upside very strong, and then it gave it back, and now we're testing the lows. So that's going to it's going to be really important. My thinking here was that there could be a, a flurry of activity up towards the uh, – Pink, 9 period moving average of 33,320s. And then we're going to get the big test of do we plunge from here um, and we just take out all the lows. In other words, we go like right through 31, 32,000 to 31,900. Maybe we're going to do that now. Maybe there's an ugly Friday that turns into a really ugly Monday. But if we're talking about a crash scenario, remember Friday's, uh, like Friday the before the October 19th, 1987 crash. If we're talking about that, um, I, I see the possibility, but I don't see the other, uh, the, what I would call the fundamentals doing, doing that. And that would also imply that Monday is the low, and from then onwards, no matter where it crashes to, you start a brand new move to the upside. We've, we we kind of cleaned everything out. My thinking is that we are in a bear phase and that we keep getting these rallies with lower lower highs and lower lows until we get that volatility index. And if you think about the volatility index, where we are in the new cycle and all, <clears throat> um, remember we were going going to, uh, Russia was, was going to war. They stepped over the line um, into the Ukraine uh, that was early February. I mean, February was the signs, and then in February they did it. And we got that spike to the uh, 38th level, uh, 37.79 uh, on the, let me make that red so that I can see it clearer, in the VIX index, and then 37.52 on the rebound on the 8th of March, a lower high. And then we plunged down the VIX index down to the, what was that, 1870 or something? 1845 level on the 4th of April and ran all the way up to 36.54. I uh, must make that red as well. Uh, and it was on the 2nd of, of, 2nd of May. Um, so the fear factor based on the gauge, on the, the, the VIX index gauge, is saying there is so much going on here that we're at the rates... Russia, and there was a third thing that I didn't put in here, highs in the VIX index at 37.79 back on the 24th of February. And here we are, um, March, April, May, uh, three months later, just nearly three months, two and a half months later, and we're bumping up against those levels when that, when that fear part of it is, it's abated quite a bit. Not only that, in the market itself, we know that there's inflation. I, I talk about the market hating the unknown about the unknown. It's always every day deals with the unknown. We kind of know what's going on here. And that's why I think when the final plunge to the downside comes, where we make the low for the next big move up, I think there's going to be a lot of other things. So these, I, I believe, are all part of what I call the earthquake and the, and the tremors or the tsunami and the aftershocks. So what we're looking at here is just a series of aftershocks. The worst, I think, in the price is still to come, but the news, a lot is in the market right now. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, question, a question, a statement in the den about HDGE, which is hedge. This is, uh, uh, let me, this is called the Ranger Equity Bear ETF. Yes, it's in leg F. Funny that you mentioned that because I have it in leg F. And this morning I was thinking, okay, is this the time? I, I missed it earlier on. We had, we had uh, discussed this hedge before. Uh, I just uh, showed it to subscribers. I never got in. It's a pity because it really is a terrific hedge. Look at the way it's gone from a low in the 23s to where it is now at 28. It hit 29.49 this morning. doesn't have to be, give you the greatest percentages, but it's a good way to play. It doesn't have the, um, you know, some of the... Some of the ETFs get diminished every day because they get reconfigured. So they're always losing a little bit of a percentage uh, at the end of the day. This is a little different, I believe. And I liked it, but it was in leg F. There was no other way that I could count it because it made a lower low three days ago. So even that instant restart, and this is called what I call the Chapman Wave unconventional instant restart. I didn't want to go there. So what we're looking at here is that it seems to me on a very short-term basis that this is what you got to keep your eye on. And we will, for my subscribers to my opening call, on the next really big pullback in hedge, either that or one of the Dow um, ETFs that is either one-to-one -one or two-to-one, a short, we'll be looking at that again. But I am, I am at the moment thinking that there's just enough bearishness and support in the key indexes that I'm watching, which is the Dow and the S&P, to suggest that what I'd spoken about some time ago was there's this rolling correction and that at some point some form of uh, some sector will give you some kind of support. And that's the reason why we've we mostly cash. I mean, we've got a huge cash position because some of our older positions we still are long, and we 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 have intraday or intraweek short-term trades, um, but nothing that I've considered to be uh, a, a move that is more intermediate term. Even the um, uh, oil sector stock that we just got, um, I'm just even that has to be at this particular point with crude oil. And, and it's not directly, it is related, but not directly related to crude oil. Crude oil trading up 96 cents at 109.23. Remember I said, if this can start to trade over the 112 area and retest and then break above the high that was made on the 24th of March in the crude oil of 
Then we're looking at something else. Then I have to go into the camp that also says, well, wait a minute. Uh, the TLT has just made a lower low. It's made this incredible arch formation. There is a, some kind of a trend line support, but that support, let's be very strict about this, is it in a, a channel wave inside track propellant zone. It hasn't even come close to the support level. It has to drop to about 111 to do that. Uh, and all I can see is that within the context of what we're looking at here, um, yields in leg C to the downside, the TBT, which is on the upside leg C, and should still go to a D, uh, that means yields should still go even higher. It's in leg D right now. And it seems to me that put it together with hedge, which we're looking at, which is, the, is basically the short side of the market, leg D in the TBT, leg F in, the, in hedge, leg E in the weekly chart of the TBT, and it's saying we're just right at a point where there could be some kind of relief, and therefore those base levels that I'm looking at are really critical. Now, there's another thing that I have to talk about. I meant to do it yesterday. I didn't do it. I meant to do it the day before. I didn't do it. And it's something that I, I am remiss in keeping in mind because it's my very own thing. I, I haven't got it now. I, I don't want to do this on the break. I've had some trouble for some reason during the night. My, my um, computer is shut down. Either it saves or it doesn't save my trade station. If it doesn't save it, it's just a big hassle for me. I've got to redo the charts. And then charts I had done three months ago, don't see, it goes into a sort of a library and I can never find the exact same thing. So what I want you to do is to say, let's go to, and in fact, let me do this right now. I'm going to go to a blank chart. This is Technical Friday, so I want you to do something that's a little bit more technical. Uh, blank chart, TBT, oh, it's all notated, but that's not the issue. Let's go to... Uh, oh, let's go to Shopify. All right. So Shopify on a daily basis. Hmm. Is that what I mean? Yeah. Okay. It doesn't matter what, what we go to. Now, what I had done in my CD, uh, which is now kind of out of print for people that are really wanting to get it, I'll make some kind of arrangement. Uh, you just send me an email, um, and I'll, I'll print. A, I'll get you know a few more printed up. But it is a CD, and most people don't have CDs, so I just size it. Um, I'm going to put that to rest. Maybe I'll, I'll find the time to do it in a different format, but the formats today are so difficult. But this basically what I wanted to say is, look, when you've got a pattern like this, I, you know, I'm still not happy. That's not the one I want. Let me just find a chart right now. This is really important because this is part of the psychology of investing. Um, this is a really important, it's a key metric of things that I do certainly in the, the, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever it is, minute charts that I'm studying or even uh, using as uh, trades. Uh, let me find it here. I'm going to go to that right now. Let me see if I can find a blank one or at least close to a blank one. I especially had one already. Is this blank? No, it's not. All right, I'll just use this. So this is, oh, I had this Twitter, Twitter. We were talking about Twitter, and I said I would look at it on a 30-minute chart. Let's go to, yes, whatever, it doesn't matter. Look at the chart. You don't even have to care what it is. I had drawn, and I, I love this. I thought it was such a, it was just, I patted myself on the back, and I said, are you going to keep that in mind? You see this trend line up. Well, when you got a trend, when the tide is moving up, you can trade, which is kind of what we've done, for the last week or two on the sh on the long side, you can trade the market down, but you better be real quick because when the trend is going up, does this arrow look good? Does this look right? It looks absolutely wrong. Why? Because the trend is your friend. And if you're going up, identify it and just go long. Because if you're wrong when you go long, but the tide is going up, the tide will save you. But if you're wrong when you're short, unless you're doing it on a very short-term basis, and we've had a lot of success uh, trading the Dow on the, uh, long side, on the long side for all these different moves, but the, the easiest thing was just to stay on the short side and say, hey, every rally is going to fail because the tide is going down. 
So yes, you can be good. You can be. I know that I have a lot of traders, intraday traders who like to do this, but I also have people that are intermediate term. A lot of people long. A lot of people use my work for the bigger picture. So I'm kind of saying to myself, gee, that. Keep in mind that the trend is your friend. And look on the downside here. You can trade the long side. But basically, what's happening? This tide is going down. So as I said, don't care about what you're looking at now. It happens to be Twitter. We're looking at it on a 30-minute basis. The trend is your friend. Trade the trend for the bigger picture. On a short-term basis, using certain skills, yes, you can do very nicely if you're correct in the very short-term, uh, the little waves that go in and out. But look at the bigger trend. So with that said, I humble myself and I say, uh-oh, that wasn't a good idea. But look out the Dow's coming back. Look at the S&P's coming back. If you back. want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back. Dow's a drop. The Dow's down uh, 270. Uh, S&P's down 40. Trying to come back, but the sunny pressure is intense. Now, a couple of things. I just wanted to get this out the way. I heard uh, Tom, Tommy Jr. So, so Tommy's show, Market Kickoff, he discusses uh, just uh, uh, things that are absolutely pertinent to the market at the moment, and he does it with both fundamental and technical analysis. Terrific show. But what he did today, that two things that I happen to overhear, usually when I, it's like when I'm, I'm, I'm actually watch the, I, I don't have a TV in, in, in my room, in my office for, for years now. Um, in a way, I kind of miss it in a way because it gives me, I, I pick up on, uh, I used to be, um, 
I used to follow the ticker and be a ticker reader all the time. Uh, and I like that. But uh, I also found that just the noise, and even if it's on with no volume, um, it's, a, it's a little distraction. But um, uh, when I do, uh, when, I'm, when I go out the office in the evening and I, I'm, I'm sitting maybe, maybe in front of a TV or whatever, um, I, I, I'm listening to things, but only with half an ear because I got my charts and I'm busy doing things and I'm studying what's going on uh, in my own work. Um, but you'll pick up some things. So that what I thought was really nice, what I picked up this morning, and I, I wasn't listening to the full conversation. You know, there's just words that pop out and say, oh, oh, and then I, I quickly follow whatever it is. Um, two things that uh, he discussed. He discussed the move on the upside and the downside in the S&P. And I said, yeah, I, I, I might be wrong, but I, I, I think I've seen that before, but it wasn't within a week. So the, 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 the point was well made. The speed, but the other point that I thought was quite important is what happened after those those sharp moves up and sharp moves down. There was a pretty decent rally almost in every case. That's what I, that was one of the things I was looking at. Um, the other thing is I've got Shopify here, and I was I thought this is the perfect one. This is where you can look at the trend. Look at this: the trend from the 1762.92 uh, November high of, of 2022. And I remember the CEO was with uh, Kramer and was extremely positive that the, I think within two days of the high, and uh, just a knowledgeable young man. He just uh, it was he was he was convincing. He was articulate. It just made sense. And I remember saying it because I knew someone who had who had a big position in Shopify. And I'm thinking of this, and I'm saying, wait a minute, there's a there's a cup formation. And I even remember talking about this in the week, uh, um, uh, the following week. And I said, look, strong technicals back there in July, very weak, new all time high, at on, in November, but weak technicals or weakening. And the stochastic barely went above 80% for more than uh, uh, two weeks, more like a week, and then it pulled back. Not a good sign. Well, I heard him, I think, was it yesterday or day before, being interviewed again. And great earnings and uh, every. What's happening? When, when stocks are out of fashion, they are out of fashion, and it doesn't matter because the trend, the tide has changed. I believe that Shopify will be back someday, but it'll be maybe morphing to something a little different, whatever it is. And then the good earnings and outlook and everything will push it to the upside. I'm not going to give you a buy or sell or anything. I'm just saying this is the chart. And I want to talk about some of the earnings that have been discussed that I've heard. And once again, I really I, I kind of listen with half an ear because um, oh, it was last night. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, G7. Yeah, I thought I heard it. And um, I, uh, as far as I'm concerned, what he was saying made a lot of sense. But what he didn't talk about was the reason why it became out of favor as a real darling and tumbled from 1762 to today's low of, listen, if you're sitting, if you're sitting, I hope you're sitting down to a low of 355. I mean, whew, that is, I mean, that is a really big, it is getting close. And that's the reason why I'm looking at the at this market and I'm saying, I think that we're going to start seeing better sector rotation over the next three weeks. But it might just be um, some recognition that oversold conditions were such that there could be a nice percentage gain, but not from where many stocks were. Now, I wanted the other thing that I heard Tommy talking about, and I thought, oh, my, I thought about this about six weeks ago, and then it just went right out of my mind. One of the things I've been talking about for uh, maybe 40 years is at, let's just go here to, uh, we'll go to Disney, although this is really not the example I wanted, but we'll go to Disney. I, I mean, the chart is not the example that I want to look. It almost looks like Shopify, a little dreaded H right there and fails. It makes a lower low today. It's trading at 109, down almost three. Uh, it had a high of 203.02 back in March of 2021, a little over a year ago. And here it is at 103. So it got cut in half. Um, but that's not that wasn't the point at all. What Tommy was talking about was... Um, 
Guardians of the Galaxy. And I had never even heard of the Guardians of the Galaxy. And that's just the way it is. But what I am talking about is within the context of what I look at for the code of phase of markets is that you get excessivity to the nth degree. And one of those I'd always spoken about, haven't spoken about it for ages. In fact, some of you here uh, will remember that I'd, I'd actually shown diagrams of roller coasters and all that sort of thing going towards the high of 2007, 2008, um, replicating what I talked about in 1999 going to 2000. And all of a sudden, you've got this incredibly fast um, roller coaster and it's just interesting that it's arriving right now it's also interesting that skyscrapers are not quite in vogue anymore but what they have are these skinny towers uh, if you going if you look at Manhattan and you're looking at uh, the area near Central Park I, I'm always in Brooklyn so I look across the 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 uh, I look across the river, and um, I see these really beautiful, tall, skinny buildings going to higher highs, and it's amazing. I mean, I can't imagine the sway when you're in one. I, I've heard talk about it, but uh, you kind of get used to that. You get off, it's like you've been on a boat, you know, it takes your, your sea legs, take a little bit to get used to. But anyway, so it's interesting that this roller coaster comes right at this particular time. Does that mean to say that we are making a major coda type top. Well, so many of the things that I looked for were not there at this particular top. It was a top that was made through other circumstances. One of the first, I mean, I've now just almost thrown away all the books. I've got, I can't even tell you how many dozens and dozens of books I've got uh, articulating the lead up to the great crash. After the crash, I've read just about, oh yeah, Gold, Gold Wraith, you name it, and I've read it. And I've just thrown that away. I've said this is at this particular moment. This is the last three months. I, I haven't thrown them away. I've put them aside. I said I'm not going to read those anymore. I have to read something else because this decline that we're looking at now are social conditions. That's war. There are economic conditions. That is because we're looking at inflation being uh, the purveyor of slowing down consumers appetite we're looking at yields and look at the yield i didn't even get to that wow i don't want to date to finish before i do this look at the yields the yields of tbt is up to 30.89 uh, 32.48 was the high in october of 2018 stumped down to 3.98 and there it is at 30.91 i'll be back in a moment we'll do some conclusion of this particular thing. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, right, folks. So, yeah, let me, let me get back to back to the to the market here because um, the other stuff I can include any time that we want. But what I am saying is that there are conditions now that are so different to the usual coda phases that we get to with the excessive excessivity. I would have expected Hood to be at highs. Uh, that's a brokerage company. I, there's something a little different about this, not a little, but very different to other top formations that I've seen. And that's the reason why I still say I see some intrinsic buying and I see I see the rotation going on a little bit. And as long as we can keep key supports, regardless of what happens until maybe later, there's a, you know, the, the earthquake and then the aftershock until that final aftershock comes and then we can start a much bigger move to the upside. That means you've got to be real careful and that's the reason why for subscribers we've got a very high cash position. A uh, question about CH CWH. This is Campus ca Camping World. This is what's his name? Uh, he had that show years ago. I used to watch it. It was very good. Um, can't remember his name right now. Uh, and he's he's part of this. I like it. This is a leg A because it's gone to 80 percent in the stochastic. I have got. I, I shouldn't really do that. I should be strict. I'm, I'm going to be strict. I'm putting a plus sign here. I haven't yet got an up arrow in a single leg A. You really need a little more evidence to say that it's gone from a buy signal, which it's in right now, to a buy mode. So right now it's acting really well. It's a, uh, the the summary is in. in a, in some places un unfolding right now. So this should have upside action. Key, key metric right now is to hold the 2780 support. It's at 30.62. So put this on your list as something to watch that is acting well in a market like this. The other thing we're looking at here, so let me just go through a bunch of questions that came in. Uh, could you please, where would you go? We were looking at Lulu the other day. Is that still um, a looking weak? Yes. That, you remember I said it made that high, it made that peaky E high in the left side, right side price time match. It's struggling at the 200 period moving average, and the technicals appear to be weakening. And about, well, it must have had earnings today. It's down $28, down 8%, at 315.22. So, yeah, this is, and, and it's not, these stocks, a lot of the um, clothing stocks, the clothing areas, are not doing well at this, but they were doing well and they're not doing so well. So Lululemon, Athletica, Sports and Apparel, we're not doing well. Uh, let me just run through my quick, oh, XLF. Now, this is very interesting. Yesterday, I considered that there was a chance to be looking at some of the financials because it looked to me that for a moment they might be ignoring the, the yields going up, but at some point it should kick in. And then I said, nope. I don't think so. And I looked at Bank of America, which we've had before many times over the years and had really good, really good gains in them. And then we got out and waited the, for the next buy. I decided to wait. Look at Bank of America down 57 cents at 36.98. One of the ones that was also on my list was uh, SoFi, 
which I've looked at many times for, for many subscribers. And I just said, you know, it's just digital financial services with mobile applications. I just don't know. There's a lot of competition out there. I don't know it's in the in the in the crosshairs for moves up right now. I'm watching that one because it's so nice and low price at six dollars and fifty cents two cents means it can go lower, but it means that there's a nice percentage gain, even if you've got just a trade to the next leg leg up or next two legs up, but no, you're not yet. So XLF financials, be very careful at this particular moment. Um, RS was one that I'd spoken about uh, to subscribers. I said it's acting really well, uh, but I it was part of the steel sector when we were looking at Reliance Steel, but it has aluminum as well. It's trading down today, down to 195. It made a high, and I, no matter how I counted that, uh, because it had a new buy signal from higher, from lower than the previous peak A trough, uh, that makes it brand new. This is in a leg C, but it's not acting very well. It's a leg F on the weekly chart, leg C in the monthly chart. Keep your eye because this is one of the really best steel companies out there. Uh, and I think part of that is because it's got al uh, aluminum in it. But look what happened to Alcoa. It's 98.08 all-time high. Uh, I don't know if it's all-time high. Anyway, the high on the 25th of March tumbles down to where right now it's sitting on the 200-period exponential moving average of 61.74. Um, so that is really important to monitor. Question I came. Uh, let's say I didn't do something yesterday that I should have. Did that, did that. Oh, XHB, I haven't looked at that for a little while. XHB is the uh, spider, uh, the S&P home builders made a peak C top. Now, this is going to be so interesting because this coincides with the S&P only making a peak B. So the monthly chart, peak C, a really big pullback. It can go deeper even from a peak C. But it was a peak D and the uh, weekly chart, remember, D is where you start. That's your target in a buy mode. It can go higher than that, but target is at least a D at 86.61. An exact on a weekly basis, two weeks with an exact 86.81 high. And it comes down. And where did it go to today's low of uh, 59.89? I'm Keep your eye on this uh, because this is really important. If you put this together with the HGX, uh, the HGX, which is the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index, that made a peak B. In the monthly chart, pull back sharply, and it made a peak C minus under the previous high, which was a G on the 14th of May at 518.75. So we've come down, we made that beautiful cup formation. I drew this in, I didn't put weak and strong. In this particular case, it was really strong going to the high of May 2021 at 538, and then it went to a, a slightly lower high at 531 in December, and look at the weakness. And the technicals, and then it failed. And here it is down. Um, the low that was made on the 8th, I think it was, the 7th of April at 388.30. Uh, today's low is 391.00. So just keep your eye on these because it's going to be a big tell in the sector rotation. We had this huge move up in the home builders. Uh, look at this, Toll Brothers. Uh, this is more the more pricier homes, I believe. Peak C makes a high at about 70 something. But remember, this is a stock that once upon a time uh, had a high of, uh, let's see, was that? yeah, that was the high back in 2007. It went to uh, 58.67 and then made a plunge to a double bottom low over a period of of a, of, of two years with 13.55. And back in 2008 to the low of 13.16, the low of October. And then it made a beautiful cup formation within a big rectangle. And even the last low was 10 something. That was 10, 13.28. And it's gone to that high that was made at 70. What was that high? 75.61. So just keep your eye on these because it's really important to be able to monitor stocks that were of the best ilk in the sectors that we're leading and where they are now. And that's happening all over the show. Now, what I'd say is I believe on a very short term, let me just give a summation now of what I'm looking at. I don't see there was a chance, but I didn't put it into my kitty at this particular point to say that unless there was a move with a close 
almost like yesterday down at the low Monday could have been just the most horrible rendition of a of, of major cast waterfall cascade I don't think that's in the cars right now because I think that what we've got is a trading band and we get to the lower part of the trading band for some reason some money comes in so until the Dow trades at 32,800 I think we're in this just rectangle formation, maybe at the lower part. Of the- Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back, and yes, Marcus Lemonis, uh, a very interesting character. I, 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 he produced good results from what we can see on TV, but I, I don't know if that's the case. But it looked it really looked pretty good. Anyway, that's his uh, company, and I, and I like it right now as uh, going against the trend. So let me just do this here. After the the low that was made with this Chapman Wave Roman candle back on the twenty fourth of January. We had a real choppy sideways move, an H pattern that was successful. And then there was a rally, and it failed to the peak C minus at 35,824, and then made a slightly lower low from 33,150 down to 32,272. Just a little bit more than slightly, but the close was back above that high, so that's why I say slightly. Then there was another Chapman Wave Roman candle with a big pop to the upside and a sharp move down with a retest from 32,272 to 32,578. And then a sharp move up that went to peak D, at 35,372, pull back, made the cup formation. We discussed strong candle on that high. That was made around about the 20, whatever it is, 24th of March. And then April's high of the 24th of, uh, I think it was maybe the 28th or so of, um, of April, went to 35,492, much weaker technicals, and we came tumbling down. So as I'm looking at it, <coughs> excuse me, now, there's a chance that we could rally. And if we do rally, 
What if we go towards the 32,400s, which is like four, 500 points from here? That's a big ask. But if there is, look, the histogram on the MACD is starting to improve. The stochastic's much better than it was a few days ago at 30%. That's not to say you couldn't get a tumble by the end of the day. Anything can happen. I'm looking at patterns. I'm saying this particular pattern says to me, we've done a tremendous amount of testing of the left side low. If this is successful, we could have a pretty decent rally, and it could be a rally that just saves the market. And then you've got to be looking at what happens on the next rally. Are you starting to see weakening technicals for another turn down? And that's the turn down that takes out the 32,000s as absolutely support the whole put down. Uh, looking at XOM as we go out, press KMN, press XOM. I have to call this a leg B at this particular point. Um, it's holding very well, but we have to think about it Monday. We want to see the close effect about it Monday. With the double top that's forming, he's in the leg, in the 